So this is the story of my trip to Africa. While I was at Doncaster Rovers, we had the opportunity to go to Africa. The trip was open to all players there, whoever wanted to go could apply to go. We had to like fill out a form, give some reasons why we wanted to go, why we think we should go. We had like an informal interview. The coaches decided who they wanted to go, who they thought should go. After we'd found out, fortunately I was I was one of them who was picked to go on the trip. We had a couple of weeks to raise some money to fund the trip and then on the 17th of June 2013 with Ben behind the camera we met at the Keep Up Stadium to begin our adventure to Africa. 10-6, 17th of June 2013, Rovers go wild, uh, just uh, meet a few of the boys, we've got Grice here. Grice, how are we feeling? Tired. Tired, that's a terrible answer. <laughs> Tom, a bit of a uh, a bit of scope on how you're feeling uh, about the trip? Excited. Excited. I like that. <laughs> oh, Matty, how are we feeling? Alright. Alright, and what do you want to gain from this trip? A suntan. A <laughs> suntan? Good, good. A few jokes? I ain't got any of them yet. Alright, alright, alright. All right. Me and AD will push a few of them on you. Alright then, boys, enjoy your trip. We then travelled to Birmingham Airport, initially flying to Turkey, then to Kenya, and then we had uh, another stopover in Kenya and then another half an hour on our flight, I think it was, to Mombasa. Here we are, Mr. Og, how are we feeling? How many hours you had? <laughs> One hour sleep. Matthew, Matthew Tunard. How are we feeling, Matthew Tunard? Alright. Alright, you've been up for 22 hours, no, 24 hours now. Yeah. How many hours sleep have you had? Half an hour. Are you looking forward to the... Um, the assembly at the orphanage at five past seven this yeah. morning. So am I, so am I, sir. Any, uh, any winks while we're in the air? 38.5. Minutes? Yeah. Okay, how do you feel about this extra hour that we've got to spend in Mount Kilimanjaro in the pitch black so we can't see anything anyway? We are swearing. <laughs> Interesting oh, concept, so. yeah. It's just creeping into a 4 a.m. Kilimanjaro time. Just another 55 minutes to sit here and wait before Mombasa Airport opens and we can actually fly. After the flights, we then finally travelled by car and ferry to the orphanage and that same morning was introduced to all the children. By the, the infants from the school that we're in this week. How are we all feeling after uh, fresh? Are we so, still feeling good? Ready to go today? Yeah. Okay, so uh, so today it's nice and steady. A uh, little introduction with the guys, and then hopefully get our heads down and a tough day tomorrow. Yeah, Ben. <laughs> ben hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> 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 Spent, I think, three or four days at the orphanage. We played football with them, we met everyone, we ate with them, we played volleyball, basketball, we sat in on classes with them. And one of the days we was even partnered up with someone from the orphanage and we just spent the day with them. We went through sort of their daily routines at the orphanage, did everything they did, and it was just a, it was a real eye opener. And this is where I really want to say before I get too far into the video that although this trip was, it was an amazing trip, it was a really, it's a happy story to tell, it was a great thing to do and I'm really glad I did it, but some of the people we met out there really have lived horrific lives compared to the lives people live here in England and across the world. For example, when we got partnered up with someone from the orphanage, I was partnered up with a boy called Peter. Now Peter's story was unlike something I'd ever heard before. And it's short, I don't want to go into too much detail, but his, he lived with his mum and dad. His mum unfortunately became ill and passed away. Dad then found a new wife and then unfortunately his dad became ill and then passed away. So then he was living with his stepmum and stepdad and these people were just 
really not nice to him without being too graphical and going into it too deep you can imagine some of the things that unfortunately happened to him so he decided to run away and live on the streets now while he lived on the streets he had no food no shelter um, he was telling me how he was so desperate that he would drink muddy water he was so desperately hungry that he would break down bricks and eat them just to make his stomach feel full he then luckily found a job at a hotel where he cleaned made a friend there the friend went to the orphanage we went to and i think his friend was sort of the one who said to him look come to this school they can help you out give you somewhere to stay food and that is how peter came to the orphanage so yeah without bringing it down too much i felt like i needed to say that because that is the reality of some of these children's lives who went to this school but yeah after our time at the school we then traveled up some hills where we met a tribe of africans who had never seen white people before we stayed in a church one night we played football against them then we traveled back down from the hills to a safari the, uh, the church hall where we slept, slept last night um, so uh, so lads how was the sleep? You were a bit inconsistent. Gracie, how did you sleep? That's like the right way to finish, so I was alright. Okay, how did you sleep? Interrupted. Interrupted, okay. And uh, you seem to have like some someone from some sort of horror movie behind you. I just created a spare Looking menacing in your hood there, uh, Mr. Tonard. Alright, boys, so what, what did we do yesterday? Play three games. Um, how do we get on? So for the record, uh, we played three games the day before. Um, we game of volleyball. Game of volleyball. We travelled six hours yesterday on the roughest terrain known to man. Then we played. Yeah, then we played twenty minutes, twenty minutes, and forty minutes. So, um, so the lads have done well today. Uh, I can hardly walk. Uh, we've had to get a mobility scooter for Bry. Um, Brian Potter. <laughs> Brian, Brian, and Brian is now Brian Potter. So um, today we're going to see Donny the Cow and um, and then we're off to the Safari Lodge. We stayed in the hotel one night. Now this was really nice compared to what we had been staying in. Uh, we went out on the Safari, we saw lions, elephants, giraffes, monkeys. And this was a really nice way to end the trip. Really relaxed beautiful views you could see where the sky met the world we then traveled from the safari to the airport we flew from kenya to turkey we spent a night in turkey which was ridiculously hot we then traveled from turkey to england and that is where the journey come to an end but it's something i'm very very glad i had the opportunity to do the whole thing was fantastic. It's something I'll never ever forget. It's midday? Yeah. Are you not brushing your teeth? No. Would you would it be fair to say your hygiene is abysmal? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. I've worn the same boxes seven days now. Seven days. <laughs> Crusty. Yeah. Crusty. Okay. Matthew, um, highlight of the week? Safari. The safari. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And uh, funniest moment of the week. Uh, when Barbara.